Now, in a couple of weeks on the reading list, we will get to Stephanie McCurry's chapter on the Confederacy and black soldiers. There's a lot of mythology. It's well worth reading. It's a little out of order here, but it's, there's a lot of mythology about if you search the internet, you will find plenty of evidence of the legions of black soldiers who fought for the Confederacy. A couple of years ago, there was a controversy, fourth grade history, thousands of black Confederate soldiers. The Washington Post reports that a textbook, a fourth grade textbook in Virginia was approved by the State Board of Education despite the claim that thousands of Southern blacks fought in Confederate ranks, including two battalions under the command of Stonewall Jackson. Scholars are unanimous in calling these accounts of black Confederate soldiers a misrepresentation of history. On the other hand, the author of the textbook cites the website of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. It's quote unquote fact sheet, which says tens of thousands of blacks served the Confederacy. Now, if you go, you can find that on the internet, absolutely. So uh, you can take it for what it's worth. But if you go back to our, um, I have seen this on the internet, come and join us brothers with the white, see way in the left is the white officer. The, the soldiers are wearing a kind of gray coats. The white officer is in the Union blue. But I've seen this uh, photoshopped, I guess, so that he's wearing a Confederate uniform. And this is then portrayed as a Confederate black unit. See, they're all in gray, and the, the commander is in gray, and this is a unit of Confederate black soldiers. Um, now, it is absolutely true that toward the end of the war, 1864, late eight, discussion began in the Confederacy about enlisting slaves into the Confederate army. General Lee himself began to raise this in late 1864, because manpower shortages were now becoming critical. Um, one Jackson, Mississippi newspaper writes, a very interesting uh, comment, we must either employ the Negroes ourselves or the enemy will employ them against us. They are no, this is the interesting sentence, they are no longer negative characters, but subjects of volition as other people. In other words, they're recognizing, even though they're defending slavery, what do they mean by negative characters? They're no longer people who can just be simply told what to do. They have volition, or to use a more modern phrase, agency. They are going to make a choice. Are they going to support the Union or the Confederacy? And they're saying, well, we should use them ourselves. But this produced a giant um, controversy in the Confederacy. McCurry writes about it. Many insisted blacks could not fight, you know. Howell Cobb, one of the biggest slave owners of the South, says, the day you make soldiers of them is the beginning of the end of this revolution. If slaves make good soldiers, our whole theory of slavery is wrong. So to enlist black soldiers is sort of to admit the error or crime or whatever of slavery. Not until General Lee, the most popular man in the Confederacy, in early 1865, endorsed the idea of putting blacks in the army. Does the Confederate Congress really begin to debate it? There's a lot of opposition. It's not until March 1865, this is one month before the end of the war, the Confederate Congress does enact a law calling for the enlistment of thousands of black people, black men, into Confederate army. It doesn't say anything about their status, but Jefferson Davis, says, well, those who enlist in the army will become free. This is not the end of slavery. This is not a, an abolition act. As I've said before, blacks, can, blacks become free by fighting in the army like in the British Caribbean, but that didn't end slavery. Those individuals became free. Nowhere was there a promise to end slavery, per se, as part of the enrollment of black soldiers. How many did fight? Not a lot. The, the only evidence we have is a couple of companies of African American men. Th this was during the siege of Petersburg, which we would near Richmond, we'll talk about down the road. A couple of companies of black men were enrolled in the Confederate Army, sent down to Petersburg. Nobody knows if they, if they ever saw any combat. 
And nobody knows if they volunteered or were just sent, because they were people who had been working in basically Confederate hospitals in Richmond, and they were told, now you're going down to the front. Two, one or two companies, that's basically it. But the, when you read about the legions of black soldiers, this is a myth for the Confederacy. But the even passing a law enlisting blacks into the army is obviously, on the one hand, an act of desperation, on the other hand, a symbol of what has changed in the Civil War, partly because of the service of black soldiers for the Union.